So, welcome to this class on um, oligosynaptic and polysynaptic reflexes. So, what is oligosynaptic reflex? The reflex that involves more than one synapse and uh, so that means it could be two or three. Uh, polysynaptic involves many more than three. Okay. So, what are these and uh, how do those how are those different from uh, monosynaptic reflexes. So, in this class we will talk about three things oligosynaptic reflexes, we will have a couple of examples, we have discussed some of this earlier. Polysynaptic reflexes, we will have a I think one or two examples for this also I think. Then uh, flexor reflex um, or the flexor withdrawal uh, reflex that was mentioned in one of the earlier classes we will be discussing some detail here. So, the classic example of uh, the oligosynaptic uh, reflex is the reflex involving the 1A interneuron, 1A interneuron. Let us remind ourselves what what is the case, uh, this muscle is stretching, if thus this muscle is stretching, uh, then the 1A afferent gives command not shown in this picture is that it activates the alpha motor neuron of the same muscle. So, it will contract that is one form of negative feedback, but this is a monosynaptic loop. This involves only one synapse, one synapse right. This is a monosynaptic loop that we have discussed in the previous classes. But what this 1A afferent also does is that it excites a 1A interneuron which inhibits the alpha motor neuron of the antagonist muscle. So, this is the antagonist muscles alpha motor neuron. Why? Why does this do that? Because this stretching may be due to the contraction of uh, the antagonist, stretching of the agonist, stretching of this muscle may be due to the contraction of this muscle. It is also possible that it could be due to other reasons, but at least this negative feedback ensures that if there is a need for that muscle to contract, the probability that it will contract will be relatively low in future or in the, in the nearest future for the next few tens of milliseconds or hundreds of milliseconds. So, this is the this involves one synapse here and one synapse there, this involves two synapses, we, we have seen this earlier. So, what does this do? This is inhibition of the antagonist muscle alpha motor neurons during stretching of the agonist. This is performed mediated by 1A interneuron and 1A afferents uh, serve as the sensor. So, this is the sensor and uh, this is the interneuron that is causing this reflex. Okay. Uh, how do we know that this is an oligosynaptic reflex? How do you know that uh, this is actually involving more than one synapse. So, what actually uh, is done is the difference between say that monosynaptic loop and that oligosynaptic loop is actually of the order of 1 millisecond, it is actually between 0 0.5 milliseconds to 1 millisecond. Since we know or, or slightly this way or that way, slightly less or more. Since we know that um, the synaptic delay due to neurotransmitters can be between 0 0.5 and 1 millisecond, we know that there is just one more synapse that is involved. If there were two more synapses that were in involved, then the delay will be higher by about about anywhere between between more precisely between 1 millisecond and 2 millisecond. Okay. So, this is how we know that this involves two synapses through classic uh, neurophysiological methods. The case of the 1B afferent, what happens in this case is uh, the muscle say the agonist muscle is contracting. When the agonist muscle is contracting, the Golgi tendon organ starts firing that is the 1B afferent. Now, what would be an appropriate negative feedback for that? So, if the muscle is contracting, we should reduce the amount of contraction, but let us remember that uh, all the proprioceptor neurons are excitatory by default. So, this 1B afferent excites 
a different neuron an inter neuron which inhibits the alpha motor neuronal pool of the same muscle. So, this is a, again a disynaptic or involvement of two synapses in the previous case we saw the monosynaptic case if the stretching is there for it for the muscle to contract I can excite that uh, alpha motor neuron that is happening monosynaptically. But if the muscle is contracting for it to contract less or reduce the amount of contraction or balance the amount of contraction I have to inhibit that that cannot happen through one synapse, but rather with uh, it happens with the help of two synapses. Now, so it inhibits the alpha motor neuron of the same muscle, but what it also does is it inhibits the interneurons it inhibits the interneurons which inhibit the alpha motor neuron of the antagonist another layer of uh, negative feedback. Now, what does this do every time this Golgi tendon organ fires or if this muscle is contracting in a way it is disinhibiting the antagonist pool R is also slightly increasing the probability that the antagonist pool will be excited. Okay. So, this is inhibition so this is 1 minus and this is another minus so that becomes plus at least at least figuratively we could say that it increases the probability that uh, this alpha motor neuron will get excited. So, that means the force then that is produced by this antagonist will be in a position to balance the force produced by this agonist. So, that is the other way. So, there are two things that the 1 B interneuron does it inhibits the same muscle homonymous muscle and it disinhibits the antagonist or heteronymous we will just say antagonist. So, it is not confusing antagonist is disinhibited ok. This again involves how many loops we said how many synapses this disinhibition involves 1, 2 and 3 synapses whereas, uh, inhibition of the same alpha motor neuronal pool involves uh, 1 and 2 synapses ok. So, this is again uh, another example of an oligosynaptic reflex ok. Now, what happens in the case of polysynaptic reflexes? Now, what happens is that sensory information from receptors actually this could be any number spindles, Golgi tendon organs, articular receptors, cutaneous receptors you know so many of these too many of these send information to interneurons in the interneurons in the spinal cord I am just calling them spinal interneurons. And uh, depending on the situation it could excite different muscles or uh, alpha motor neurons of different muscles producing an output. In the previous cases we were able to describe the input output relationships with relative ease. In this case it is way more difficult to do that because it is not clear what these things do. Actually the picture that is presented in the spinal cord is a mess it appears like that or at least when we examine that it appears like it is a it is a complete mess there is a whole network of interneurons that connect in various different ways. Let us remember that is provided for the purpose of flexibility and that also reminds us of the limit of the classical neurophysiological approach. What is the classical neurophysiological approach uh, that is this right we excite one uh, for example, we excite uh, this one a afferent and study its effect on the other cases on the case of uh, you know that alpha motor neuronal pool that alpha motor neuronal pool that muscle that muscle all those things we study right. But that stops after about 2 3 synapses after that it becomes uh, you know it becomes like a black box. So, I am going to call this as spinal interneurons they do something there is a uh, depending. So, and also that means that the response is going to be less and less stereotypical as you travel from monosynaptic to disynaptic to trisynaptic to polysynaptic right the response becomes 
less stereotypical and more flexible and the circuitry neural circuitry that is involved becomes from goes from simple to more and more complicated okay and so at approximately here uh, the classical neurophysiological approach uh, you know reaches its limits okay and a classic example of a polysynaptic uh, reflex is the tonic stretch reflex is this now what is this let us remember also suppose a muscle is having a background EMG level which is that okay. suppose a, a muscle is having that amount of background EMG level this is the background EMG level of the muscle some non-zero activity and then that muscle is stretched its length is you know increased if that happens there is going to be an immediate response so we will have to see the time. So, the stretching starts with a very small delay with that delta t there is going to be um, a response that response we have called it earlier this is a monosynaptic response we call this earlier variedly as T reflex for mechanical stimuli and H reflex for electrical stimuli this is the monosynaptic classic monosynaptic reflex it is given a different name it is given phasic stretch reflex phasic stretch reflex we will talk about what this means in a bit now and then it settles and then the length has settled at a new level right, here now what happens uh, the response does not go back to here that does not happen this does not happen what happens is that the response settles around here but there is a difference in the previous background response versus the current response depending on the length this difference is due to what is called as the tonic stretch reflex this involves not a monosynaptic pathway but rather a polysynaptic pathway involving several um, several interneurons and let us remember that so that means what that means tonic stretch reflex is the response of the system to a level change the level of the mu muscle length has changed from one length to another length for that the response so if that is the level change that is the response if the level change was that much the response will be that for example the response could be that much if the level change was this much then the response could be this much so the level changes the tonic stretch reflex uh, response will change so this is not exactly stereotypical this becomes I told you earlier that this becomes less and less stereotypical and more and more flexible but not just that there is more let us remember that this on the other hand is a phasic phenomenon is it not this is the monosynaptic response the T reflex H reflex is a monosynaptic response which we call as the phasic stretch reflex uh, engineers would call this uh, as this response is transient whereas this response is steady state is it not this is what we would call this is what engineers would call this as a response that is you know transient that is going to last for a brief amount of time in to a stimulus so in response to a stimulus that is going to last for a brief amount of time but the steady state is due to other things due to the level change etc so approximately this can be called as a transient response and this can be called as the steady state response transient, transient response is in this case h reflex or t reflex or a monosynaptic reflex or phasic stretch reflex whereas steady state response is the tonic stretch reflex which is response to a level of the stimulus okay so it turns out that uh, the characteristic of the tonic stretch reflex could have important consequences for uh, moment generation uh, how does uh, this vary we will talk about that in the next few slides or maybe in the next class another case of a polysynaptic reflex is the flexor reflex so suppose several receptors are there these re receptors uh, sense a danger to the limbs right 
So, these are uh, two afferents, free afferent, free nerve endings, cutaneous afferents. Together, all these things I am going to call all these things together as flexor reflex afferents, F R A. Okay. Flexor reflex afferents, these. They all send uh, information about uh, potentially dangerous stimuli to the spinal cord. So, there are interneurons in the spinal cord. So, these are spinal interneurons. These interneurons then react in such a way to cause flexion or withdrawal from the painful stimulus. We discussed this earlier, right, in the pre in yesterday's class and the previous class that uh, if there is if this is a nail and uh, you know a person is touching the if it is a hard body and the person is touching there is withdrawal that is not exactly a monosynaptic uh, response, but rather a polysynaptic response it in so it could happen. So, what could be the delay that could be it could be approximately 40 to 50 milliseconds whereas, a monosynaptic uh, response is you know usually below 30 milliseconds characteristic if the response is below 30 milliseconds you can be sure uh, approximately sure, can be almost sure that this is monosynaptic if it's above 40 50 then you are talking about a polysynaptic response so and the response uh, is also tuned to the properties of uh, the stimulus more danger this could happen in more number of muscles. So, if the stimulus uh, is perceived as more dangerous, then more muscles or more stronger uh, alpha motor neuronal activation of the flexors will happen in such a way that the withdrawal can involve multiple limbs, multiple segments of the body. That means, that there is going to be coordination of multiple muscles because it you know the muscles uh, that perform flexion extension of the wrist versus flexion extension of the elbow and the flexion extension of the shoulder are different yet they all coordinate together to withdraw from the painful stimulus so that means there must be coordination between alpha motor neurons that uh, send commands to all these three muscles and they all are controlled or given the command at approximately the same time by these spinal interneurons right now, now let us say that the stimulation is happening at approximately that time right? and the response starts at approximately that time. So, now that is the delay this delta t is what I said is about uh, 40 to 50 may change depending on case to case to cases example typically this is what happens. Now, what also happens is uh, the case of uh, crossed extension reflex and other things which we will discuss in future classes. So, for um, in this class, so what we have seen so far is the oligosynaptic reflex 1A, 1B, etcetera, polysynaptic reflex, this is the tonic stretch reflex, flexor reflex. Okay. And another example of the polysynaptic reflex is the flexor reflex. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of this class, we will discuss the other cases in the future classes. Thank you.